Michael, why are you not sleeping? Linda asked, stretching sleepily. Love, it's already past nine. I'm gonna take Teddy for a walk. Michael replied. As if to confirm his words, the big dog whined impatiently at the door. Teddy, do you want to have a walk? Michael asked and patted the pet on the withers. The dog began to jump and spin, almost knocking down the owner. Stop it! Are you gonna run after squirrels in the park again today? The guy smiled, opening the door. All residents of the surrounding houses, without any exceptions, considered Michael Evans a successful businessman who confidently stood on his feet and became rich at a young age. But few people knew what the guy had to go through to achieve this financial well-being. Having taken out a business developing loan, Michael opened a construction company, in which at first he was not only a manager, but also a foreman and worker in one person. Over time, Michael got a regular clientele, which provided him with a decent income. After a couple years, the staff grew substantially, and his tiny firm turned into a solid construction organization, with good recommendations and domestic capital. At the same time being successful in business, Michael suffered a fiasco on a personal front for a long time. It's not that he was bad-looking, it's just that the women who met Michael on a path of life, every single one, saw in him rich businessmen. At whose expense, they can live happily ever after. Linda was no exception. Evan managed to charm the guy, believed that she won the lottery. The wedding was not the case, because for her part, the girl did everything to drag rich businessmen down the aisle. Taking advantage of the fact that Michael loves her, the girl did not deny herself anything and constantly spent money. But when her husband brought a Labrador puppy in her house, Linda took the pet with extreme hostility. Why did you bring this animal home? Now everything will be covered with its hair. Honey, it's an elite breed. Besides, Labradors are very kind and affectionate, objected Michael, who liked Teddy at first sight. Okay, let him live. Linda answered, changing her anger to mercy. Since then, the girl, at every opportunity, she expressed dislike for Teddy, who reciprocated her. Michael, on the other hand, believed that over time the dog and his spouse would get used to each other, and everything would normalize. And now, walking with the dog in the park, the guy rested his soul, distracting from the work nuances and conflicts in the family. Teddy, how about we go to the store? Let's go to the grocery shop. We'll buy you something tasty, Michael said when the dog sat down under a tree after running around. Hearing the words of the owner, Teddy immediately perked up and pricked up his ears. He knew what a store was understood, that it was unlikely that they would leave it without having an appetizing bone. Approaching the store, Michael wanted to tie the dog at the entrance, when suddenly he saw a boy standing against the wall and watching the customers passing back and forth. In appearance, the baby was no more than six years old. Noticing Michael with the big dog, the boy visibly perked up. What are you doing here, kid? And where is your mom? Michael asks, concerned about the boy's appearance. I don't have a mom and dad too. My name is Billy. My sisters got sick and sent me for medicines, and I lost money. The boy sobbed, showing a torn pocket on his pants. While standing here near the store, you're unlikely to help her. Come on, show me what you need. We will save your sister, if that's the case. Michael answered readily, whose heart was painfully squeezed by the boy's words. As it turned out, Billy and his elder sister Monica lived in a small house nearby. Going to the door, the boy pressed the bell button twice. The door was opened by a girl of about 20, who despite the warm blanket was shivering from a cold that shook her. Pack it up, I'm gonna call a taxi and take you to the hospital, you may have pneumonia. Michael commanded and reached for his phone. What about Billy? Monica tried to object. He will stay with Teddy, he's a kind and intelligent dog who loves children very much. Michael reassured the girl. In confirmation of his words, Teddy went up to the boy and licked him on the cheek. Billy burst into a joyful laugh and began to scratch the dog behind the ear. Well, you already made friends, Michael said smiling. Taking Monica, who was weakening before her eyes by the arms, the man helped her to get into a taxi. At the clinic, Michael made sure that the boy's sister was examined first. Unfortunately, Michael's fears were confirmed, and an X-ray revealed Monica had right-side pneumonia. The guy got home only in the evening. Where have you been? Your phone was off. 
Are you really saying that you walk with Labrador? Linda asked with displeasure as soon as he crossed the threshold. No, I have the friend. My phone is dead. Michael calmly replied. In response to this, Linda made a contemptuous face and went into the bedroom. Michael had been working late on work documents. Tomorrow, he had an important business meeting with a partner from another city. It was supposed to decide the fate of a large-scale project prepared by Michael. The next day, he got up early, and after drinking coffee, went to a meeting. Linda, as usual, slept until lunch, and did not even accompany her husband to work. The day flew by unnoticed, and Michael was still not there. Her husband's phone was silent, and no one at work knew where he could be. Closer to night, Teddy suddenly began to whine and rush around the room, as if he feeling something. Why are you running around here? Go to bed before I put you out on the street. Linda shouted at the dog. Michael didn't show up the next day, or a week later, or even a month later. The police treated Linda's words indifferently, and soon she herself liked to live in a way. Her husband's firm continued to bring a stable income, therefore the girl felt free and independent. Over time Linda became so emboldened, that after burying her husband in absentia, she began to bring men to her home, changing them like gloves. During such meetings, Teddy growled at strangers, which invariably caused the young girl the hostess, who did not like it very much. Linda had her patience for three months. Then, grabbing the dog by the collar, she took him out of town and left him. Teddy had been sitting in one place for a long time, thinking that the owner would come back for him now. Then, in frustrated feelings, the dog ran in the direction of the city. He didn't have to wander long for long. A big, well-groomed dog was noticed by a family in which parents liked to drink alcohol and the children were left to themselves. Life with such people seemed to Teddy to be real hell. They barely fed the dog, giving him stale bread and leftovers after their poor meal. One day when the owners went to the supermarket with the dog, Teddy suddenly behaved strangely. The dog, for no apparent reason, approached the tramp, sitting on a piece of cardboard, and squealing joyfully began to lick his face. Noticing the surprised look of the owners, the young tramp with a scar on his head smiled and said, I'm sorry, apparently your dog likes me more. No matter how many times negligent owners did call the dog, he flatly turned out to move away from the beggar. Since then, a homeless guy in the Labrador have often been seen in the vicinity of the city. One day, a girl with a little boy came up to a tramp. Handing the beggar some money, she asked, Your name is Michael, isn't it? The guy looked at her in surprise and shrugged his shoulders. I don't know, or rather, I don't remember anything. Tramps call me Simon, but I don't know my real name. Monica, it's definitely Teddy, and this is Uncle Michael. He just doesn't remember anything. The boy exclaimed and hugged the dog. I'll tell you what. You know, Simon, your name is Michael. Therefore, get ready and come with us. Monica suggested, surprised that a successful businessman turned into a street bum in such a short time. The homeless guy meekly agreed, and together with Teddy, went to Monica. On the way home, the girl told him everything that had happened to her and everything she knew about him. She also did not forget how he paid for her treatment in a hospital in advance, which saved her from death. Subsequently, she tried to find her savior, but everything was in vain. Michael, no matter how much he frowned, could not remember anything. Only he knew that a year ago, Tramps found him in a ditch with a bloody head. He had no money or documents with him. He didn't even know his name. So, he was very worried about it. Monica, having fed Michael a delicious dinner, decided to find his profile on social networks so that he could remember his past life. About two hours after studying his photos, memories came flooding back to the former businessman with such force that he could not hold back tears. As it turned out, on the day of the meeting with the business partner, Michael became a victim of robbers who had been following him for several hours. Having asked to bring them to the city, a couple of robbers beat him and left him to die in a roadside ditch, where compassionate tramps found him. Remembering everything, Michael first of all restored the documents and filed to divorce from Lindy. The man felt that he had done the right thing, 
After all, while he having lost his memory, was leaving off bread, wandering around the basements, Lyndon managed to bury him and took over all his possessions. After that, Linda repeatedly asked for petitions, trying to regain what she had lost, but Michael was relentless. Instead, he took Monica and Billy, who after all the events became like family to him. Now, together with Teddy, they often walk along the shady alleys of the park, Labrador still unsuccessfully chasing squirrels, which causes a joyful laugh from Billy. Teddy the dog is very happy with his new family. After all, there is sincere love in it, not only for him, but also for all its members.